In this video, you are going to learn more about functions and um, yeah, basically understanding prototypes and we are going to include external files, which we didn't do uh, yet. Okay, um, first of all, of course, we will use our basic construct to start with this tutorial. Okay, um, good. In the last video, we uh, declared a function with a return type and the function name. We had uh, arg an argument list um, and we returned the value according to the return type. And now uh, I'm going to call that function. Um, we learned that we can call a function by uh, using the function name and uh, we can give some values, provide some values and get the uh, return type according to the given values. Okay, um, one thing here, I, I uh, have some static values here that is uh, perfectly okay. I told you in the last video that uh, if we uh, provide this function call with some variables instead of static values. Um, that is also okay. okay. Uh, the function itself will just get the values, not the variables. We are going to talk about this in the next video. Um, so we focus on the location of the calc fun uh, function here. So first of all, I'm going to uh, compile this with the W all, so I want to see uh, all warnings with the W all parameter. And you can see I do not get any warning. And of course, I start the program and we see the expected result. Okay, the one thing you can ask yourself now is is it important that the calc function is above the main entry point? Yes, it is. The reason why is the following. If we um, call that here, first of all, if you if you just compile it the regular way, you are not going to see any error uh, whatsoever because this will produce a warning. And by default, warnings are silent. So that means uh, GCC will not provide you any with any warnings. So we need that W all flag to see um, the warning we are getting here, which we didn't get. Oh, I see the problem. I take the wrong file. I'm, I'm sorry. Let's do it again. So uh, that thing is we can run the file. Everything is fine. But with warnings turned on, we will see um, implicit declaration of function calc. And we also see the warning category, warning implicit function declaration. That's a pretty long name. Um, and we see the problem is in this line. Because we are calling the function here, the compiler knows nothing about the function calc. So um, the one good thing is that the program will still work as we saw here. So I can remove that one here to show that because I compiled uh, a wrong file before. So if I compile this one, it would still give me an executable file. I can still execute that file. And this time I took the right file. Mm. Okay, so um, it, it's still working fine, but a warning, of course, it's not very good um, coding style. So what we can do is uh, we can go here and define a prototype. That means we tell the compiler um, there is a function calc which takes two integer values and uh, has a return value of integer. We no need to tell the compiler what this function actually does. We will tell that later. We just, um, we just give a prototype of what this function will return and which uh, arguments are required. So now 
the compiler knows, okay, I will get an integer value as we promised it here. And that function will require two integer values as parameters as we promised here. So now if we compile that, we are not going to get any warning whatsoever because the compiler knows that we have promised this uh, prototype will exist in a uh, function with a function body. This is called the function body. Okay. Um, actually in a prototype, we don't even need to tell the, the tell the names for the variables. We just need to declare the, the types. We just need to say, okay, we have a return type of integer. We have a name and we have uh, two param parameters that are also integer types. If we are compiling this, it will work as well and it will also run just fine. Okay, so why are we doing this? It's, it seems like stupid. It seems like we can just go ahead and say, okay, we just, we, we are perfectly happy with, uh, with the main entry point being the last function called. Yes, that is true. But imagine first you have, um, more than just one function and maybe one function uses another function and you always need to make sure that all your functions are declared before you use them. So that will result in some confusing um, code style and uh, you always need to take care when to declare a function uh, or when to use a function if that one is or whether that one is declared or not. And uh, the second thing is maybe you want to use that function um, in more than just one file. Uh, in this case, maybe you also want to take the complete definition and share that to all of your files. But maybe the other reason is maybe you want to have the same prototype for more than one file, but you want uh, the function body to look differently. So in these cases, you can use prototypes. And we are going to use the prototypes, of course, in external files. That's why we are going to learn about external files in this video. And um, this is done by the include comment, like uh, we already know that from other libraries. And I will have a new um, file with a name dot h. If you have a header file, the h stands for header. If you have another header file that is made by yourself, usually you give that um, header the same name as your um, source code file. Um, that, but that is just for um, header files that actually provide prototypes for this source file only. So you might as well have some, uh, maybe some files called help, helper.h, which will provide more prototypes for different files. Okay. But if you have some prototypes or some functions only defined for this very file, you can use um, a file specific header. Um, and now we can go ahead and we can put this prototype inside of this file. Okay. And um, one more thing about the include comment here. Um, if you have a C library that you are going to include, you will use uh, these tag braces. Um, if you have a header file that is located in your current working directory, you are using the, um, the include comment with the quotes, double quotes, and uh, you provide the file name and maybe also the folder. So it could be like this. Okay. And if we, uh, if we do so, the file will be linked to our code so we can still compile this. It would still run well without any error. And now we can, um, use the calc function anywhere inside of our, um, inside of our code. Um, like I said before, I have declared or I have declared a prototype here inside of the header file. Now I can include the header file in more than just one file and I can change the function body to whatever, um, 
this file may need. So this function may change between files now. But I also can take this function and put it inside of here. And I can compile this and still run it and it will still know about the calc function and it will still everything uh, work fine. But now I, if I go here and I try to change this, um, I get a problem. So now I can't change the function body, but I have a general um, definition for the calc function. So um, keep in mind that you can define prototypes and uh, if you include that file, you can change the behavior of that function later on, or you can um, take that function, put it inside the header file, and you cannot change the behavior of that function body anymore. That is the important part uh, you take from this video, as well as, um, the uh, order is important for whenever you want to use a function, you should declare that before using it. And um, yeah, you have a better understanding of how functions are working in the C level language. In the next video, as promised, um, we will uh, talk about the arguments of a function and then you have a pretty good understanding of how functions are working. See you then.